right, well, uh, first up, we'll probably be shipping Adabox uh, only a little bit later um, because of the international shipping issues and supply chain things. But uh, that doesn't mean you can wait any longer. We have less than 100 openings, so go to adabox.com and go pick up an Adabox. Next up. All right, we've got some coming soon new products. So we've got two submersible pumps. These are used for um, water fountains, like low cost desktop fountains or like little like outdoor fountains. But they're also great for plant watering projects. We actually got these uh, to match up with our bonsai buckaroo friend for microbit and clue to do plant watering projects. So these are pumps where you actually put them inside a bucket of water and then uh, they pump water out through the little spout. And so I can show on the overhead an example. These are different than like our peristaltic pumps where there's two tubes, one input, one output. This um, pump actually goes uh, inside. You can see it goes inside the um, bucket of water here. And then we have these tubes that connect. I can try a live demo. This wasn't working, but maybe if I'm lucky. Okay. So you can see water gets pumped out. Uh, this project's only pumping out water every few seconds. You can get me wet here. Um, but it can actually do, you know, like a, quite a bit of water. If you turn it on, it'll, it'll pour out, you know, maybe like a gallon in a minute or so. Um, so good for making fountains, plant watering projects, not good for water that you're going to drink or anything that's not water. So like don't put it into soda or lemonade or alcohol, whatever. If you want to do projects where people consume the liquid, use our peristaltic pumps because you can use food safe uh, vinyl. And of course the liquid doesn't go through the pump itself. So we have two types, a vertical type and a horizontal type. Basically depends on how it stands. Um, they're basically the same pump. It's just the plastic is a little bit different. Okay, it looks like we have some tubes. And we have some vinyl tubing that goes with the pump. So um, again, this is not food safe. This is you know PVC with stuff in it. It's good for making uh, fountains. It's good for making uh, plant watering projects or hydroponic projects. Um, but it's very easy to cut. It's just vinyl tubing. All right, next up. Next up, we have uh, the Garmin LiDAR Light V4. So we carry a couple of LiDARs that are like laser distance sensors from Garmin. And they're also making um, light-based distance sensors. So I think these are probably UV, uh, sorry, not UV, IR light. Um, that's lensed and bounced off of an object and then the, the, the amount of um, strength or maybe the time of flight of the light is what's measured. Um, this doesn't use a laser even though it's called a LiDAR. Um, I guess these days people say LiDAR for any light-based distance measurement but a lot of people think it means laser. This is an IR LED based solution not a true laser but it's a lot less expensive because of that. Um, what's interesting about this is it's got an NRF52840 inside of it and it exposes the SWD pins. So you can actually reprogram the chip inside, say with Arduino or, I mean, I guess you could probably try to figure out how to do it with CircuitPython, but note that the USB pins are not exposed. So um, you could do Bluetooth low energy type stuff with it for advanced development with the Nordic chipset where you're reading um, the data from the sensor and then transmitting it wirelessly. But for most people, they'll just use the I2C interface that's available on those pins. You can see there's like 10 pins. Check out the data sheet for the pinout, but there's like power ground, I2C, and then some other pins, some GPIO pins, and then SWD uh, uh, reprogramming and debug. Okay, we also have this nifty cable. Um, this cable is a interesting, an interesting cable. Let me grab my demo. Okay, so this is a JST um, SH five pin to four pin adapter cable. Get in there and I can show this demo. Okay, so on the overhead, um, you see here I have, well, it's upside down, but you have a uh, MKR0. So these are the Arduino based uh, boards that are used for like IOT projects. They have a whole bunch of different ones. They have cellular ones, they have Wi-Fi ones. They have like ones that do LoRa, they have ones that do Sigfox. Um, this is the Maker Zero, so it's a SAMD21 chip. And um, the Maker boards, a lot of them have these um, like five pin connectors and people are like, what are these connectors? Well, this connector actually has um, five volt ground and I2C connection, connections available. And so this cable takes those pins and then converts them into a STEM-IQT. So you can uh, use it with any of our boards that say 
uh, STEM QT on the back or the front. However, uh, I do want to make a caveat note. So the power pin on this is five volts, not three volts. And all of the STEM QT breakouts we have uh, contain a voltage regulator um, on the back here. So it converts the five volts into three volts. So you can safely use this to power this OLED or whatever sensors we have that are on the STEM QT breakout. Um, however, if you're using this and you want to use this with a SparkFun quick board, um, a lot of them don't have any regulators on them. And so you just have to be aware of that, that you don't want to plug this into something that isn't safe to use with five volt power. And um, our QT boards are, but not everything that has this connector is. So that's why we think this is probably best only for our STEM QT boards. Another thing that isn't an issue that we found, but is good to know is that um, our boards have a light pull up to uh, the VN pin from the I squared C data and clock pins. On the SAMD21, it doesn't seem to mind that the, you know, it's going to float a little bit higher than 3.3 volts, um, but you can put stronger pull-ups uh, pull from the um, SDA and SCL pins here to 3 volts to counteract it. But either way, you know, if you're just plugging in one device, uh, it seems to be just fine, and you can uh, you know, connect OLED, connect um, GPS, you have uh, sensors of various types. Uh, it's a great way to extend your MKR boards with our STEM QT series. Okay. Handy cable. And next up, the star of the show, besides you, Lady and our community is? The Neo Pixelate M4 Featherwing, which I have to clear off some space here because this demo right, is I'm so big. I'm going to show some photos big. of it. Show some photos. Okay, while, so first off, this PCB is green because we're still waiting for our uh, primary PCB fab to come back from their uh, Chinese New Year slash COVID break. Um, okay, I'll get my... Do you want me to go to the overhead? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay, so what does this do? What, what are you even looking at here? So what you're seeing here is eight uh, NeoPixel strips of 144 LEDs. And it's like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So it's like a lovely rainbow of different colors. And they're all connected to um, this Feather M4 here. And uh, it's on a doubler with the um, feather wing in question here, which is the NeoPixelate feather wing. So let me unplug this and show it. So what this does is it has level shifters on it, and it has connectors that are ether, either, either Ethernet or you can have uh, plain GPIO breakouts. And it takes um, eight pins from the feather M4 and... Um, level shifts them from three volts to five volts and also this works very well it's designed to work with our neopixelate library which uses uh, timer dma on the samd51 so that all those neopixels are get updated it happens behind the scenes like so if you want to do animations control a huge number of pixels and you don't want that delay you don't have to uh, use a, our standard neopixel library that's blocking because you can use the dma on the samd51 it means you can do a lot more like dithering or smooth animations because you can say, hey, draw these NeoPixels and then immediately it returns back to the user code uh, and the DMA goes, goes off and runs on its own. And you can compute and calculate um, the next hue and saturation limits or if you have to do animations or if you have to read data from Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and then do some calculations. Um, this is what this Featherwing does. So it has no like microcontroller on it. It's just a level shifter basically, but it has the right pinouts to make it work great with our Feather M4. So it's a low cost way to extend your Feather M4 to make it perfect for large scale NeoPixel projects. We did the math. Given the Feather M4 has 192K of RAM, you can control 16,000 NeoPixels okay. if you so wished. It's a lot. It's a lot. All right. And with that is. Yay. All right, let's do a recap. New, 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 new. We kept new. We have these submersible pumps. They're low cost fountain pumps, but they're also great for plant watering projects. That's what we think they're good for. Horizontal type, vertical type. We also have some vinyl tubing that goes with them. Not good for human drinkable water projects, but great for plant drinkable water projects. The LiDAR light uh, V4 from Garmin is a NR52840 chip inside that's Bluetooth and ANT compatible with a uh, IR transmitter receiver pair for distance measurements up to 10 meters. 
Uh, it's got some GPIO exposed as well. You can uh, use an I2C device mode, or you can reprogram that NRF52840 inside for more advanced uses. We have this handy five pin JST to four pin JST SH cable that'll let you plug in our STEMA QT boards, sensors, displays, GPSs, what have you, into your Arduino MKR board. So handy, you've got an MKR board, it's got that connector, why don't you plug something in, plug and play, no soldering required. And the star of tonight's show is the NeoPixelate M4 Featherwing. Plug this into your Feather M4 and it will give you eight level shifted outputs that are connected to uh, DMA capable NeoPixel pins, use it with our NeoPixelate Featherwing library to control up to 16,000 NeoPixels, which is a huge number, and uh, we don't recommend that because it's like going to be heavier than the sun. Or you can just uh, take advantage of the DMA to do advanced um, animations, data manipulation, so you can send data to those NeoPixels, return immediately, and start calculating the next frame of data for your NeoPixel display. And that was the new products.